Praise be Jesus Christ. Good evening, and thank you for joining us on another virtual house webinar series. Tonight, we're going to talk about campus ministry and how we live our faith at Central Catholic. So we'll begin first with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear God, our Father, we praise you and we thank you for the blessing of this day and of our Allentown Central Catholic family. We ask your hand of blessing to stretch out upon us and all of our families who are joining us tonight and who will watch this in the future. Give us discerning hearts to seek and to do your will in all things. May we follow closely the path of your Son that he has set out for us with the help and prayers of our Blessed Mother Mary and all the saints. Keep us, Lord, and help us to grow each day in faith, hope, and love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, welcome. My name is Father Mark Searles, and I'm blessed to be the chaplain of Allentown Central Catholic High School, and I'm joined with a, a great crew here tonight, and we all want to uh, welcome you and introduce you a part of uh, how we live our Catholic faith as, as, as a great high school uh, through our campus ministry, uh, with lots of opportunities, specifically um, in retreats and in service. Um, so we're, there was a previous webinar about our Catholic identity and how that shapes and forms all that we do as a great foundation. And tonight we want to talk a little bit more specifically about the blessings of, of having a campus ministry full-time in our high school that really um, brings that, that light of, of faith uh, to life in a very powerful way. Um, so much more than the classroom, we want to give our students practical, great life experience to form the whole person, mind, body, and soul. And campus ministry is a beautiful way to do that outside of the classroom through retreats and service opportunities. Um, so a little uh, descriptor here for you about a little bit of our mission is to provide spiritual and service opportunities that enable students to deepen their relationship with Christ and each other. And we see so beautifully how not only does this lift up um, uh, the Lord and his honor and glory, but also it lifts up our community and makes us one uh, as we work together so beautifully. So as a, a Catholic high school, campus ministry plays an important and unique role in fulfilling the school's mission to form each student academically, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Again, the whole person, cura personalis, care for the whole person. Um, and campus ministry in the office of the chaplain is a welcoming environment where students are, are always welcome to stop in that respects where everyone is on their journeys with God, while also proposing uh, the peace and joy found in Jesus Christ and his church. Um, so it's a little bit about who we are in a very general sense, but again, we're, we're welcoming to people of all faiths, no matter where, where one's at on their journey with God um, or their knowledge of him or, or maybe the lack thereof, and, and we're just joyful and and, and uh, we bring a, a neat sense of peace, those gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit into the building. And when we do pray and, and, and lift up all these things, you can feel the whole spirit of the school lifted as well. Um, so that's a general mission statement. On the next slide is a little bit again, we mentioned before about our school year theme. Each year in that spirit and mission, we try to pick a particular theme for the year. So this year we picked Cor Ad Cor Loquitur, which is a little fancy in Latin there. Uh, for the very simple phrase, heart to heart. Heart speaks to heart. Um, from St. John Henry Newman was a, a great motto of his um, as an educator, a, a great famous uh, churchman from England uh, who had a heart to, to teach the faith and, and, and all the beauty of education as a great um, Oxford man himself. Um, so, so in our own Central Catholic family, that idea of speaking heart to heart is so special and empowering this year as there are some separations, obviously tonight, we can't be with you in person. Um, but it just speaks to how much more um, important it is for us to be heart to heart with everything and with, with Christ, uh, but also with each other and doing these things. Um, so we're even trying to be creative in our service opportunities and in our retreat activities in this year um, with a whole lot of curveballs, um, still lifting each other's hearts up and, and, and being present as present as we as we possibly can to each other um, to to, uh, to 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 live our faith well and to grow in it. So. That's a little bit, again, of an overview of our school year, so our theme for the year. And on the next slide, you have a little uh, bit of an introduction to our campus ministry office as well. So we're blessed with a, a really fun and awesome team. Um, it's been a blessing for me to serve now over five school years at Central Catholic High School um, as the chaplain. Uh, we are super blessed to have uh, a sister of Christian charity, Sister Sophia Marie, who is with us uh, now in her third school year, right, Sister? Yes. Um, from the wonderful community out of Mendham, New Jersey. Um, she has a beautiful vocation that she loves to share with our students and uh, is a great blessing in assisting all of the retreats and, and campus ministry activities, 
as well. And our, our masked buddy in the garden down there is Mr. Patrick Markham, the famous uh, Markham, who uh, is our, our service coordinator, who runs our Central City Project, which we'll introduce to you as well tonight. Uh, but we're very blessed, even among other um, Catholic and private schools, to have a three full-time person staff. Um, all of us help out in the theology department, Sister and, and Mr. Markham especially. Um, but So it, teaching in the classroom, but also, again, taking that practical knowledge that we learn in the truth of our faith and, and living it in the world through through community service and retreats. Um, so we have a, we're blessed with an all-star lineup there on that slide. And next, I will turn it over to our wonderful sister, Sophia Marie, as she introduces um, some of the retreats and how we, how we pray together as a community and grow um, with some neat examples and, and lived experiences then uh, on the road as we uh, do some traveling in our retreats too, right, sister? Yes, Father. Thank you so much. As Father said, I'm Sister Sophia Marie. And I think one of the blessings of being at Central and especially with campus ministry is that we can really engage the student in all aspects of their life. And especially through our retreat program, um, I, this is my third year in Central. And um, I've been so amazed at the breadth and depth and range of and variety of retreats that we offer. So not just the ones where you're, your typical ones that you would assume where you go away for a couple of days, which we'll talk about later, but I'm um, just some beautiful, some ones to, for example, we've gone to the cloisters so we can see the beauty of God's creation, um, medieval art, medieval church history, um, all and to engage all the different senses as we continue to grow in our faith. So as you see in um, the, the slide here, that was from our cloisters retreat up in New York. And then at the very beginning, we stopped um, also at a um, St. Francis Cabrini Shrine, which was just a beautiful way to um, mesh and bring together life, our everyday life with that faith experience. So um, it, a lot of our um, students enjoy going off-site as we can throughout the year. You can pick one or two retreats. Um, we've gone to New York City. We've gone um, to Baltimore, to Philadelphia, um, many different areas. Um, Elizabeth Ann Seton Shrine as well. Um, so just to be able to expose them to see how the faith is lived in such different ways. Um, here you have an example of some of our retreat posters that we put out throughout um, the campus of um, Central. And the students can really pick. Uh, there's a variety of retreats that we have throughout the year. Uh, they vary from our fall retreats, including some going All Souls, All Saints. We had Godspell last year, March for Life, which is one of the, and Father will uh, speak a little bit more on that one, um, the most popular pretty much in our school. Um, and usually at the beginning of, of the year, we have what we call our um, class retreats. So that's another way for each of the students to come together and get to know um, their peers and and, and, the, and their friends and that are in each of their classes. Very good, thanks sister. So as, as sister said, um, one of our most favorite popular retreats every January is the March for Life, even if it's uh, pretty chilly on the road down in, uh, to Washington DC, um, our hearts are on fire and we, we're, we're praying for, for the protection and, and to, to lift up the sanctity and dignity of all human life from natural conception to natural death. Um, so we have a beautiful rallying mass at Central Catholic on a, a few days before the march. Um, this year, sadly, with all the precautions, we're probably not gonna be going to Washington, D.C., um, but we still look forward to, to this in the future. We've created a great tradition. Um, all the, the high schools in the Allentown Diocese have met. Um, it's been a neat thing to coordinate, um, to meet at the Baltimore Basilica, the nation's first cathedral in Baltimore, which is the, the, the first picture below, our big group in front of those beautiful columns outside of that cathedral that's very historic to our nation. Um, every year we reserve that church for a, a stunning mass. Sometimes our own bishop has joined us to celebrate mass there. So it's a neat rallying point where we all pray together. And then we finish the short trip down to DC from there. Um, we all meet um, again, usually over by the Washington Monument. And we watch, walk very peacefully and joyfully all the way down the, the mall to the Capitol building and the Supreme Court building where we just, again, say a prayer, lift up our beautiful Vikings for Life sign and, um, and head over to uh, Union Station for a bite to eat before we head back up to Allentown. Um, so it's a simple day, but it's a lot of fun. It's a great day for just community and friends going together on sometimes four to six buses 
Um, and like sister said, it's very popular, but it's a neat day to learn a little bit about um, standing up for, for, for the right to life, um, what a peaceful protest looks like and how that's a neat part of our social justice teaching in our church, um, that dignity and sanctity of human life and, and why it's so important and worth fighting for. Um, and it's just a neat learning experience. It's always fun to visit our capital, our nation's capital, such a beautiful city. Um, so like we said, we like to take our, our retreats and our days, um, these opportunities, experiences from New York to, to Baltimore to, to uh, Mount St. Mary's and, and the Seton Shrine. It's neat to learn about our faith um, with very hands-on practical experiences. We also get a neat dose of culture and history um, and, and what you know the first Catholics and, and Christians in our country did and how they helped to build up um, something like Central Catholic and our heritage as well. So we learn a lot on these experiences as well, which is a lot of fun. Um, so up next, we also, like Sister said, there are seasonal retreats. Like we try to put up some of those flyers occasionally throughout the building to advertise what's coming up. So students can always look forward to seeing those posted around the lockers. Um, but one that we just were you know, blessed to run even in, in a pandemic, we had social distancing on a school bus down to Valley, Pennsylvania, which um, again, speaking of our Catholic history and heritage, um, one of the first Catholic churches in the United in, in the colonies before we were the United States of America is called Most Blessed Sacrament in Valley, a little farm town not far from uh, just southwest of Emmaus. Um, again, the, the German missionaries, the Jesuits would have come from Philadelphia first and the first uh, community out in the farmland was here in Valley. So they built this church where some of those first Jesuit missionaries from Germany are buried. Um, on All Souls Day, we kind of learned the day we went uh, about how our tradition of praying for the dead and visiting a cemetery is a beautiful practice. And we did that, students, um, prayed for the dead, looked at all the different tombs and graves and, and beautiful um, prayers and, and words on around the cemetery. And we uh, had a nice little adoration time and prayer in the church to pray for those people and had some pizza at the end of the night to enjoy each other's company. So it was a nice, peaceful, it's, a, it's always a neat little blessing in the fall around All Souls Day. We try to make that traditional pilgrimage to encourage the, the beautiful devotions and again, traditions in our faith. Um, so that's a fun one. It's usually a nice little small group on a very peaceful, beautiful afternoon, as you could see in the pictures, it was just at the beginning of November. Um, so we try to do seasonal retreats, also like an Advent retreat. We usually visit the Christmas city of Bethlehem, see all the lights and the beautiful uh, decorations, but also go to some of the very old, again, Moravian churches, which some predate our own nation um, in their his historicity, and, and just uh, visit Holy Infancy Church, some of the beautiful old Catholic churches in, in our area in the valley, um, and learn a little bit about what Advent is and why we celebrate it and pray and sing a, a carol or two. And it, it, they're just fun experiences that help us to engage in the church here too, in the, the, the calendar and celebrate the seasons. Um, one of the retreats that for me was most surprising when I started to work at Central were our vocation retreats. Um, I, I just find it um, so fascinating that so many of our young girls and really the young men also with father are so open to explore that very crucial and important aspect of, you know, the point in time that they're in, which is their vocation. And so we're able to offer two retreats, one in the fall and one in the springs. In the spring, um, last year, we had about 24 girls go over to our mother house. Um, one of our novices made crepes for them and we had a craft that we were able to pray together. But um, it's just the, the openness to be able to see what religious life is all about, how it's lived, um, to even consider, could God be calling me to take that step and give my life to God in that way? Um, I know from Central, um, in our own community, we have had five young women that have graduated that have entered the Sisters of Christian Charity, as other um, young women that have entered the Dominican Sisters of St. Cecilia and other religious communities as well. So um, it says so much for this institution that not only um, really builds the, the student intellectually, but also, um, you know, plants deep into their soul, uh, the reason for their existence. What is my vocation? Um, so those are um, some pictures of those vocation retreats. And then... Look at, look at Sister one. pointing to that beautiful light of Christ. <laughs> I love that picture. It's such a stunning one. Very inspirational, <laughs> Sister. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Father. <laughs> yeah, but it's 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 beautiful moment to see how, how they're all ju just open and willing to to learn more and to and to hear God speaking to them, to each of them. 
um, the next slide, I believe. Uh, these are just some examples, again, of our freshman and sophomore retreats that we have at the beginning of the year. I think it's so important to be able to create community as soon as the student enters uh, this great central family. As much as we're a family, it's a big school for some of them bigger than what they're used to. So what ways can we find to engage them and to bring them closer together and start to help them also branch out and make new friends and feel more at home at Central. So normally around September, October this year with COVID, it was a little bit later. Um, we have our freshman retreats, which they all love. They have a scavenger hunt. They get to see Central from the inside and out in a whole different new light because it's usually after school. And then um, small groups, a lot of great discussions and and really tools to, to help them and guide them to feel more at home and, and uh, learn to navigate this first year a lot better. And the same thing with our sophomore retreat. They've already been a year here at Central. Now, how do they really unpack everything? You know, that, that big breath that you take and you begin, but how do you start to live it to the fullest uh, and make the most of all the opportunities that Central offers in so many varied ways? The nice thing is um, students can choose to go on a class retreat or a pilgrimage. Um, there's about 20 different options throughout the school year. So it's nice um, they're not locked into one or say they have a conflict on one day when one is offered. Um, or this year with our hybrid model, we've been kind of like the class retreats were offered um, twice for each different group. Um, so there's a lot of choices. So it's neat if they have a different like, like we did the theater retreat last year that was that was a production of Godspell and then a Q&A with the cast. Um, our more arts inclined students can enjoy that. We've done art retreats where we go and actually create some something artistic and then talk about, have a little reflection about that expression and, and our spirituality. Um, so there's a neat variety that kind of tailored to all the different interests of our students as well. Um, and then speaking of class retreats, as those are a nice option just for bonding as a class, one of the um, kind of a, a capstone of our retreat experience is what we call kairos, uh, which is a, a Greek word that we say means God's time or or a sacred time set apart, a, a propitious and very important moment for action or change. Um, so it's a neat moment for seniors where we actually kind of go away for up to four days and, and overnight so they can have a real rich experience of, of kind of leaving their normal day-to-day -day behind and, and, and hearing from their peers. It's a, it's a student-led retreat as well. Um, with some great reflection and talks, we, we form a whole team of, of student and adult leaders. Um, and over those four days, there's a neat reflection on who am I, who is God, and, and how does that work together in my life, and what does my future look like? So it's a very formative experience for our seniors, especially as they're getting their college acceptance letters and looking forward to their future and their careers and um, the service they might enter into and all the different things they might do and exploring their vocations again. Um, it's been a very impactful retreat that we're very blessed to still run now up to number 24, uh, which we did just postpone sadly, but we're looking forward to running it in the new year when hopefully things are a little safer. Um, but it's such a fruitful experience. Uh, we can't wait to do it every year, even several times a year, so that as many seniors would like to go or are able to go and, and really have that time away to, to enjoy each other's company as a class, again, as seniors, um, and to have this neat capstone retreat experience. Um, it's so fruitful and just led so many students to grow in their faith and friendships with each other, especially as they go off to all different wonderful places in the country and world um, as our graduates and alumni. So Kairos has been a neat blessing for us. Another hallmark at Central Catholic is 40 hours. Um, the Eucharist is, of course, the source and summit of our faith and a beautiful moment of just lifting up our hearts that we're looking forward to uh, celebrating in just uh, a little over a week away. Every December, we kind of pause right in the heart of our school year just to spend quality time with our Lord. Um, and, and this is such a fruitful place where many students have said um, they really felt um, the Lord speaking to them and grow, grew in their faith. Um, last year, there's a picture down there where we had a beautiful procession with the Eucharist around the building um, for a beautiful benediction and with the whole school singing and praying. Um, it's a fun day. Students usually dress down. Um, we have some great speakers and breakout sessions, uh, but it's also very prayerful. Uh, we're blessed um, with some wonderful musicians who've come and joined us every year to lead us in song and prayer. Um, but it's just such a nice break in the middle of the school year to uh, in a busy season like December and Advent getting ready for Christmas to pause and just focus on um, our foundation in Jesus Christ. Um, so that's a great blessing. We're almost up to 20 years of 40 hours. And, uh, and last but certainly not least, we also want to talk about um, community service. We have these wonderful prayer and retreat experiences, but we also like to um, 
to, to put our, to get our hands dirty and do some work too, to, to help those most in need around us and to live our faith in that most important way of serving those most in need. Um, so Mr. Pat Markham, um, he's a little camera shy, so he asked me to speak on his behalf tonight, but um, he, uh, he's got a great heart and a wonderful mind, uh, creativity to do all this service. So just last year, actually, we were blessed with an extra space uh, from Sacred Heart Parish right next door to us to create a food pantry that our own students and families help stock. So here you can see some of our students uh, filling up with canned goods and non-perishable items. Uh, we have different flyers on on social media all the time for students to bring in different items that we're in need of. And then we usually have a big uh, moving day, getting all that food into the, the pantry, sorting it and organizing it. And then the following day, we, we put out flyers all over the city, especially for our neighbors in need. Um, there's different levels of poverty, obviously, in our city and community, uh, from the working poor to those um, who are homeless. And we're, we're blessed to just offer them uh, a quality meal sometimes, whether it be in the the, the, the food pantry style, or even putting on some, some home cooked dinners. We have a great teacher chef and uh, our students love to prepare the meals and be the waiters and waitresses as well when it's safe to do that. We're not doing the, the community dinners this year, but we have been able to even safely and with social distancing, um, continue our food pantry tradition um, to feed our neighbors, which is very needed right now. And, and thank you if you've been one of the people who are generous enough to donate your, your food or, or any efforts or, or um, support for us in, in this great effort, but it's been a wonderful way to serve the, the community that we're blessed to live in in the heart of Allentown. Um, so along with the CCP Food Pantry, the Central City Project was also created about almost 20 years ago now at Central Catholic, and it's been a neat hallmark. One of those things is our Amy Sullivan Memorial Garden, where um, every spring we plant um, tomatoes and peppers and a couple of spices and seasonings, um, all homegrown organic uh, urban gardening, our students learn again to get their hands dirty, some gardening skills. Mr. Markham leads them all summer in the watering process. They get some great service hours for helping. Um, we usually have a bountiful harvest that was just still producing great vegetables through October this year. And we um, chop it all up and make it into delicious salsa, which is a fundraiser then that goes back to directly those community meals that we serve our neighbors. And some of the vegetables go right into those bags of groceries for our, for our community too. So it's a neat uh, full circle of, of from, from the seeds that we plant uh, to the food that we're able to give to our neighbors and share from our abundance of blessings. Um, so the CCP, that idea of Central City Project, we, uh, we work hard to support our neighbors um, along with other projects like going to the Boys and Girls Club or tutoring some of our partner schools um, like St. John Vianney or Sacred Heart. Um, so our students love to help um, their fellow students too. Um, some young young uh, future Vikings to help them to grow uh, in a lot of neat ways too. So it's a neat way to, to get community service that's organized for our students. They can certainly do community service on their own in different places as well. Um, but before I talk any more about all the neat uh, retreat and service opportunities, we wanna hear from some of our students who are, who are very generous with their time and joining us tonight. So sister will uh, lead us in, in chatting with them. Sister, yeah, if you could just unmute. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Anyways, but I think it's always so wonderful to be able to hear from those who are in the trenches and our students, I think, are the ones that really make Central the great institution that it is. We can talk about it, but until you meet them and you come and visit and, and experience it, it's it's a whole other thing. So tonight um, we have Ava Lucchetti, Liam Gibson, and David Castano with us, and um, each of them is going to share with you um, either one of those memorable experiences they've had with a retreat or really what service and giving to others has done in their lives and how um, they have grown through each of these two aspects uh, in our central uh, family. So um, let's begin, David, with you, if you would um, like to share something with uh, those joining us this evening. Yeah, so I would really like to start off sharing my experience with 40 hours. As of last year, I can't say I was too involved with my faith, but um, during the retreat, I was really moved by it for some reason when the music started playing and I just got hit with a wave of just like love from God, I guess you can say. And so, yeah, that, that was my experience with 40 hours. Um, with in other retreats, March for Life has been fantastic. Um, it's something that I'm very passionate about and I love seeing the, the amount of enthusiasm for something so important as the defending of life. Um, and in terms of CCP, it was 
Boys and Girls Club, which was amazing because some of the people that you meet, you really have no idea about. But once you get done, in my personal experience, um, you realize that some of the kids really do look up to you. And once you're done with them, one time I got a hug from one of the kids and saying how they had so much fun. And it's really awesome to just give back to people that might not be as lucky as you. And even those little things that Central like gives you the opportunity to do for other people, it's fantastic and it makes you feel really good. And it's, it's one of the best things that's offered at Central in my opinion. Thank you, David. I know um, David was sharing earlier with us really that the impact that that 40 hours had in, in his uh, personal faith life. And um, if uh, maybe we go with Ava now, if you'd like to share a little bit of either of the two aspects that are so meaningful to you about. Um, so for retreats, um, 40 hours is definitely uh, one of my favorites that's offered at Central. Um, I think it um, in the moment and it really just helps me realize how grateful I am to go to um, ACCHS and to be given the opportunity to um, experience all that we do in those um, few days over um, that week. And um, not many other schools in the area um, give their students this chance. And so I'm really thankful that my parents are able to send me to Central just to live out my faith. And I think that's um, definitely my favorite retreat at Central. But for volunteering, I love volunteering. Um, going to Central has really helped me um, form the person I am today. Um, and volunteering has helped me um, learn what I want to do with my life. Um, it, I want to do nursing and volunteering and helping people at Central really help me figure that out. But um, the food pantry is something that's really special. Um, just being able to stay after school for an hour or two to help pack and distribute the bags um, is a great feeling that I hope all students can partake in at Central. Um, the simple activity makes such a huge impact on the community that surrounds us. Um, and I don't think um, many people realize that small act of kindness can impact someone else's life so much. And we're giving them food, um, not only for themselves, but their family members for a week or maybe even more. So um, I haven't missed um, any food pantry distributions um, yet this year or last year. And I wouldn't give up um, or I wouldn't trade the time I spent there volunteering for anything else. I, I really love it. So I think um, volunteering is something very special at Central that, that not many other schools offer. So I think it really helps us stand out. Thank you so much, Eva. That's beautiful. I think as a parent, you know, it always, I'm not the parent, but you know that commercial of you can't, it's priceless, right? You can't leave home without it with your MasterCard, but you can't put price at anything like this, right? It's, uh, it really is uh, genuine. And, and to see um, the youth, uh, the future really, um, to be able to live their faith and to put it in action and, and, and not because they have to, but this truly is extra and above of everything that, um, you know, they're required to do at Central. So it's, it's beautiful to see how, how it just flows from their desire to, to be there for others and be God for others. And Liam, if you would like to share a little bit also about your experiences. Uh, yeah, definitely my favorite retreat experience. If you've heard about Central, you've probably heard about it. Kairos, uh, Father Cyril's talked about it a bit earlier, but um, you really have to experience it. The best way to summarize it is you really get to know your class or the people in your group from your class. And um, more than that, you all kind of grow in your relationship with God together. A lot of the other retreats are more like solo because you're with other people, but it's about how you develop. But on Kairos, you help each other develop. And um, I don't know, that really makes it stand out. Uh, for service, no one's mentioned this one yet, but the community dinners, those are the best. I, I got to do one last year for Thanksgiving. Um, sadly, I forgot like nicer clothes, so I had to work in the kitchen with Mr. Clifford, but it was still a great experience because I still got to like hear about the Allentown residents and how grateful they were for us to be there. And um, it was kind of like a retreat in a way. A lot of the CCP events are because you really do get to 
meet your class or not your class, but people who you wouldn't meet otherwise from all over the school. And um, I mean, it's service. So you do grow in your relationship with God at the same time. Yeah. Thank you so much, Liam. Um, it, it really is, um, to me, beautiful to see the reverence, I think, um, that each of our students has, especially during 40 hours, the masses, um, throughout the retreats. Um, you know, you would think, what's going on here? You're like practically within a church setting almost. Um, but but just their love and awe and, awe and reverence is something that that is beautiful to see. And the same thing when it comes to service, because it's that same dignity and respect that is being given to, to, to others. And, and the way that that interaction happens is, is something very powerful and meaningful. So Father, if you wanted to, to add something else and, and, and join us in this conversation, that'd be great. Yeah, thanks sister. And um, thank you to Ava, Liam and David, you guys are awesome and beautifully said, thank you for sharing your experiences. It's just so neat. Um, we're very blessed. And uh, like Sister said, our, our students are all stars and it's just neat to see them grow and live their faith um, in an environment that's, that's very welcoming, again, to people of all backgrounds. Um, but to have that foundation of, of our Catholic identity and some neat history and heritage. And like I said, getting our hands dirty in the garden and serving others and seeing Christ in them is, is just so powerful and impactful that will certainly shape um, a whole neat generation ahead of us to, uh, to give back and to those most in need, especially. Um, so we're so blessed from our retreats to our service opportunities, um, like I said, to have a, a strong staff and campus ministry that supports the school. Um, our doors are always open even just for the students to stop in and chat about life and what they're, what they're going through, good or bad, or what their future plans are. Um, it's just a neat family environment that I think campus ministry helps to really cultivate along with the other great departments in our school, like our faculty and our guidance office um, and so many other branches of, of the big, strong family tree of Central Catholic High School. Um, so I want to also uh, introduce our all-star admissions director, Mrs. Karen Meskel, who's here, and uh, we'd love to take any questions from you guys, too. Yeah, so um, the, on our screen, we have how you can ask a question. Just hit that Q&A um, little logo at the bottom of your screen, and um, a screen will pop up. You can type in your question. We'll answer it here live for you. Um, Father, while we wait, or sister, while we wait for those questions to come in, a couple of things came up um, while you and our wonderful students were talking. Um, Father or sister, can you talk a little bit about um, our service re our requirements that we have for our students? Sure. Um, right, every year um, in the Diocese of Valentine, all of our schools, the, the goal is to get our students to do at least 50 hours of community service. Um, so we break that down into a very simple, easy way to accomplish that. Um, so there's not a big rush at the end of the four years. Um, so freshmen are required to do five hours of community service. Sophomores do 10, juniors do 15, and seniors do 20. Um, those are required even in this year when it's a little bit harder, we're encouraging our students to be creative, even if it's just, normally we're a little bit stricter, but this year, if it's just around the home or for your family, that is your community right now. In a pandemic, obviously, we want everyone to be as safe as possible and socially distanced. So we're still providing opportunities like the food pantry, which we can do safely with masks and social distancing. Um, but some of our other activities like the community dinners where we'd have to be a little bit more present to each other, um, we're postponing some of those activities until a safer time. Uh, so campus ministry is still providing some activities and opportunities, but students can always go on their own to other nonprofit organizations around the Lehigh Valley. We have great partnerships um, with other fields. Like Ava said, sometimes it's neat to volunteer in a medical setting um, to think about a vocation and, and an occupation in nursing or, or medicine. Um, other students have found their paths and their college majors and their interests through volunteering. So we encourage students to explore in their in their service, uh, but also this year as safely as possible and, and with a lot of flexibility too. And we, for those students who go above and beyond, we have what's called the Day Morin Honor Society, named after Dorothy Day and Peter Morin, two inspirational people of service in the our, our local church's history in the United States. Um, who, uh, so it's named after them, but we encourage some of our students, um, like I think all three, Ava, Liam, and David, have gone above and beyond and, and gotten that honor every year. Um, it's a special honor society for those who go above and beyond and do three times the number of required service hours and, and including some of the community service, the CCP projects um, that they engage in. So it's a neat way to, um, to honor those students who who do go above and beyond and giving them themselves and, and serving others. 
Great, thanks, Father. Um, I think it's a neat uh, statement that our school makes with that day more in service society. You know, we have our our National Honor Society, which you know almost uh, schools have for the academic side, um, and because our service and our faith is so important to us, having that day more in um, service society is is something that I speak think speaks volumes for our school. Um, and I don't see any questions, um, so I don't know if there's anything anybody wants to add, if sister or father or any of our students. Um, you guys did such a great job explaining it, there's no questions, so. <laughs> um, so I just want to um, let everybody know if questions come up later, um, this is my contact information, so please feel free to reach out to me uh, via email or to call the school directly. Um, if you have questions that come up later, I can redirect those to Sister or to Mark or to any of our students. Um, so I just want to make sure that you all know that in the future you can uh, just reach out to me. Um, and then I also just want to remind you about our upcoming um, virtual open house series. Our next one is Thursday, um, and that will be led by Mr. Matt Garza, our Director of College Admissions. Um, he takes care of um, working with our juniors and seniors as they prepare for their college application process. Um, right now, he's busy working with seniors, getting those applications in and, and submitting all the requirements to the colleges. Um, so he's going to join us and tell us a little bit more about, um, about what he does and how we support our students and families um, through our college counseling. Um, and then we have some other ones that are coming up through the end of December. Um, you can also go um, to our virtual open house um, website um, or page on our website. Um, and any of the sessions, just like tonight, are recorded. Um, so whether you sign up ahead to join us live, like some of you did today, or um, if you just go to that link, you can watch any of our recorded sessions um, so that if you wanna go back to any session that you weren't able to attend, you can do that at any time. Um, so with that, I think I will hand it back over um, to father or sister, whoever is closing tonight. Before we uh, pray, sister's gonna take us out with a prayer. I just wanted also to thank you for joining us um, on our Central Catholic YouTube channel, the ACCHS YouTube channel. We have some great professional videos that were made that describe, again, more of our retreat experiences and the Central City Project and some of our service opportunities. Um, they're beautiful videos that also give you a good idea if you're interested in checking those out as well. But thanks for tuning in tonight and let's uh, turn it back to sister. Thank you again and to our students once again. And um, let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Um, turning our eyes towards Mary, who during this time is, is waiting expectantly to, for her son to be born, that that same love that she carries in her heart for this unborn child may be the same love that continues to grow in each, our, in each of our hearts. And together, let us say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you give us a blessing, Father? Right. May Almighty God bless you and keep you and all of your families and loved ones in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Thanks again, and go Vikings. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night. Bye.